Let's continue reading Chapter 2 of Socks by Beverly Cleary. So Socks was dumped in a closet, and now um, Mr. Bricker and Mrs. Bricker left for the hospital to have a baby. In the days that followed, Mr. Bricker dumped food into Socks' dish early in the morning before he left the house, and again at night after he returned, but in between, Socks was alone. He waited on the window sill. He slept. He sharpened his claws on the forbidden chair, although the fun was gone. The ringing of the telephone made him anxious when no one was home to answer. The buzzing of the doorbell frightened him, so that he hid under the bed. But he need not have bothered now. No one came to open the door. Socks lost interest in food. His ping-pong ball no longer amused him. Without love... He was bewildered and dejected. He was sad and confused. Then late one morning, Socks was woken from a doze by the slam of the station wagon door on the driveway and the sound of the voice voices of both his owners. With glad meows, he sprang from the couch. As soon as the door opened, Socks was outside, his paws against Mrs. Bricker's thigh stretching up to be petted. A light breeze ruffled his fur, and spring sunshine drew the smell from the lemon blossoms. Life was good again. Did you miss me, Socks? Mrs. Brick Bricker stooped down to rub the hollow behind his ears where his fur grew short and fine. Were you lonesome without me? she asked. Socks' throat pulsed with purrs. He rubbed against her legs back and forth, around and around as she entered the house. He could, got, he could not get enough petting to satisfy his loneliness. I missed you too, said Mrs. Bricker, in such an understanding voice that Socks felt he must take advantage of her. With a hopeful meow, he started toward the kitchen, paused, and looked back to encourage her to follow him to the refrigerator. Until that moment, he had been so happy to see his family that he had not noticed the bundle in Mr. Bricker's arms. Socks hesitated. That means waited a minute. Which was more important? Which was more important? A treat from the refrigerator or his right to investigate everything that came into the house? Curiosity won, and he turned. See what we've brought, said Mr. Bricker. A uh, smacking noise came from inside the bundle. Instantly, Socks was alert. There was something alive in there. His spine prickled, and he paused to sniff carefully. Mrs. Bricker folded back the blanket, and Mr. Bricker leaned over so Socks could see. He saw a creature with a small, wrinkled, furless face, a sight that made his hair stand on end. His eyes grew large and he backed away. Whatever that thing was, he did not trust it. As Sock stared at the strange creature in the bundle and listened to its smack and snuffle, he began to understand. His owners, his faithful, loving owners had brought home a new pet to threaten his position in the household. Socks turned his back and lashed his swollen tail. He was filled with jealousy and anger and a terrible anxiety. He's very, very worried and mad and jealous. The Brickers might love the new pet more than they loved him. Poor Socks! Mrs. Bricker stooped to smooth his fur, but Socks moved away from her. An unhappy cry came from the bundle. Oh dear, he can't be hungry already. The worry in Mrs. Br Bricker's voice was a new sound to Socks. He sure can, said Mr. Bricker, as he sat down on the couch with the wailing bundle on the lap that had always belonged to Scots to Socks. Listen to him. You can tell he has a fine pair of lungs. Socks turned his back and began washing to pass the time, until he made up his mind 
how to regain the lap from the new pet. How is he going to get his lap back? Shh. On her way to the kitchen, Mrs. Bricker spoke in her special voice, higher than her normal voice that she always had used for her cat. I'm hurrying, she said. I'll have your bottle in a minute. That's the voice that she used to use with socks. Socks paused in his washing with one paw behind his ear until he understood that this time she was not speaking to him. And that hurt him almost as much as the loss of the lap. He scrubbed his paw back and forth across his nose until he, contain, he could contain his longing for reassurance no more. Alert and ready to run at the first sign of danger, Socks crept cautiously toward Mr. Bricker, who reached for the bottle his wife had brought from the kitchen and said, Let me fit him, feed him. You sit down and rest. Mrs. Bricker sat down, but she did not rest. Are you sure you know how to feed him? She asked. Both parents spoke of the baby as he, as if he were a stranger whose name they had not uh, caught. Nothing to it, Mr. Bricker offered the bottle to his son. Greedy smacks came from the bundle. Hey, look at him go, said the proud new father. Fox took a chance. He leaped to the center of the couch cautiously set one paw on Mr. Bricker's knee, leaned forward, and sniffed the sweet, milky smell. Careful, Socks, warned Mr. Bricker. You can look, but don't come too close. Socks stared at the tiny, wrinkled face with fear, curiosity, and jealousy. He saw the baby open his eyes and raise one covered fist as if he did not know who it belonged to. He saw the baby's head wobble and his eyes cross. Socks began to understand that the creature was not a pet, but a new kind of person. A person so small that he left room on the lap for a cat. Very well. They would share the lap, but this new concession did not mean he liked the new person. Sox felt that half a lap was better than no lap. No lap. Sox put a second paw on Mr. Bricker's knee, and with his eyes half closed, he began to knead and purr. Have you ever had a cat do that to you, where it's uh, stretching his claws out? Ouch! Both, both of Mr. Bricker's hands were occupied. Take your claws, claws out of my leg. Socks found himself lifted by Mrs. Bricker and set on the floor with so, without so much as a kind word. He continued his washing to show his owners that he had business of his own to take care of. Let them take care of their business. He would attend to his. He groomed his tail with long, hard licks of his pink tongue. The baby's smacking changed to fussing. Another new sound to socks. He lifted his leg and went to work on his toes while he observed all that was going on. He watched all that was going on. Beyond his lifted leg, he could see Mrs. Br Bricker leaning anxiously over her baby. Maybe he needs to be burped, she said. I think... I think I can finish this chapter. Mr. Bricker held up the bottle. You're right, he's taken two ounces. He set the bottle on the table at the end of the couch, raised the baby to his shoulder, and began to pat its back. Still the baby fussed. Mr. Bricker patted harder. Fox lowered his leg. There was plenty of room on the lap now. No, better not risk it so soon. He went on with his grooming, but he began to get uneasy nervous. He wanted the crying to stop. The same way he wanted the ringing of the telephone or the buzzing of the doorbell to be silenced. Try rubbing instead of patting, suggested the anxious mother. The father rubbed. The fussing became a wail. Mr. Bricker rubbed the tiny back and Mr. Mrs. Bricker patted. Fox became so anxious to have the crying stopped that he no longer could pay attention to his washing. 
Maybe we don't pat the right way," said the mother. "Well, how else can you pat?" The father was beginning to see that there was more to feeding a baby than he had realized. Socks took a chance and leaped up to sit on the lap, which was going to waste anyway. Mrs. Bricker promptly returned him to the floor. Promptly, what do you think promptly means? He, she promptly returned him to the floor. Quickly, Socks was deeply hurt, filled with sorrow and longing. He lay down on the carpet with his chin on his white paw and stared into the black and empty fireplace. You know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to finish chapter two in this part. So we'll finish chap this chapter、um, tomorrow, and it will be quite short. There are about three pages left. Okay.